So we just had State of the Game today, and aside from uh, the developers telling us that we're going to get Tidal Basin with the next update, which we already knew, we're also going to get a lot of uh, changes to weapons. Certain weapons are going to get nerfed, certain weapons are going to get buffed. We have uh, changes for weapon mods, we have uh, a lot of changes for skills as well and also the skill mod so i just want to you know just talk a little bit about it just to go over what, what i'm thinking about these changes and uh and what they are for if you miss the state of the game of course so first up the weapons we're going to get a nerf to the m700 and the mk17 now the m700 is uh, the sniper that's responsible for uh, pretty much the easy one shot builds uh, they didn't really mention how much it's going to get nerfed they didn't really mention if uh, one shots are still going to be possible I think that even after the nerf, one shots are still going to be possible. It's just going to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, and depending on how difficult that's going to be, I think that's fine. I think having a one shot built in this game is, is fine to have. If you have the strongest sniper, the best headshot scope, the best rolls, all that stuff. It was just, in my opinion, uh, a little bit too easy right now. Because you put on a sniper, you get two or three damage rolls. And, and it's pretty much a one shot. So hey, what are you going to do, right? Uh, and then we're also going to see an MK17 nerf. Now the MK17 is a, is a rifle. And if you've seen my uh, best weapons of the Division 2 video, the, the one where I just compare all the DPS and, and the sustained damage of, of all the weapons, you'll see that out of all the rifles, the MK17 is by far the best while also having a, a decent amount of bloom. So that's going to get nerfed. Uh, then we're going to see critical hit damage nerfs and headshot damage nerfs, which are basically the stat rolls that you get across the board. Uh, they're going to be lowered on, for example, gear. Uh, and then for the talents, we're going to see uh, Safeguard get a nerf and Crisis Response get a nerf. And both of those will be getting uh, an internal cooldown. The values on them will not be reduced. So with Safeguard, for those that don't know who that is, it's the talent that increases healing and armor repairing by 150% after getting a kill. Uh, that's still going to be 150% and of course 75% in Normalized. Uh, it's just that there's going to be a cooldown on it now. So once you proc it once, uh, you'll not be able to proc it for a very long time. And the same goes for Crisis Response, which is uh, one of the key talents that uh, I guess I guess we'll call it the Wits build, because uh, that's what everybody's calling it. It's one of the key talents that is uh, a part of the Wits build, where as soon as your armor gets depleted, your magazine gets refilled. And that happens over and over again with, with Clutch. And with that getting a nerf... Um... I don't really know if it's going to destroy the build completely, I don't think so, but uh, it's just going to affect those who kept shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting without having to reload. But the reload time on the SMGs is already pretty short to begin with. I think the real powerhouse of that build was the clutch talent. So I think that that's where they should have looked at instead. But, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just wait and see how it plays out. Maybe it's enough, maybe not. And then, uh, of course, we also have some buffs. Weapons are going to get buffed. We have a lot of weapons that are going to get buffed. The LVOAC is, uh, is one of them. Then we have the MG5 buff. We have a buff to the LWM4. And we have a buff to the AA12 shotgun, which is the automatic shotgun. I think the buff for the MG5 is, is very justified. The MG5 had, uh, again, if we take a look at the graph that I made for the weapons, the MG5 had a, um, had a reload time that was equal to the, to the reload time of the M249, while also having less DPS. Now, the one thing that the MG5 had was more headshot damage, but it's only a little bit. It's only 20% more. All the other LMGs have 65% headshot damage, and the MG5 has 85%, but that still isn't enough to compensate for the for the lower dps i don't know if they fixed the reverse optimal range with the mg5 though because that's still a thing if a target gets further away from a player with the mg5 then they start to take more damage instead of that the damage of the bullets start to drop off so that's that's the thing i don't i don't really know if they if they fix that then we have the aa12 shotgun i i don't think this needed a buff i i don't think it did maybe it was a little bit on the low side, but it wasn't a bad shotgun. In fact, in my weapons video, I recommended uh, some people to take this shotgun if you wanted to play your life on easy mode, because uh, the DPS on it wasn't all too bad, and uh, it's automatic, so you're always going to get the max RPM out of it. But uh, I don't mind the buff on this. I really don't. Another shotgun that's really good. I guess. We'll see how big the buff really is. Then we have the Light White M4. It's going to get a, a buff as well, which is a little bit odd to me. 
Um, the weapon wasn't the bottom of the barrel of the assault rifles. It definitely wasn't. You know, again, looking at the chart, <laughs> it's somewhere in the middle. It's definitely not an outlier. Uh, but depending on how big this buff is going to be, I, I mean, I'm really curious. Either this is going to bring back the Light White M4, which is a little bit odd, because then everybody's going to run the Light White M4 again, or I'm still going to keep running the P416, uh, which, uh, as of right now, is the, the assault rifle with almost the highest amount of burst, only only beaten by the FAMAS, and then also the one with the highest sustain damage. And then we also have the LVOAC, which in my video I also called the M4. You know, the naming wasn't too good at times, but we can definitely see that the uh, LVOAC, which shows as the orange line here, could use a buff. Although it's definitely not the only rifle that needs a buff desperately, because it's not even the lowest one. We have the, the 1886, which is far below that. We have the M16, which is far, far below that. Uh, the AKM, a lot of people had questions about that. That's actually the, the weapon type for the rootless and the merciless exotic rifles. I don't know if they need a, a buff because they, of course, have that special talent where you can, like, hold and release the trigger. So you're going to do more damage through that. Uh, but still, if the LVOAC needed a buff, then some other weapons could have used a buff as well. Uh, but, of course, keep in mind that the purple line, the one for the MK17, will be lowered. And... It's hard to talk about all of this because we don't really know by how much they're going to affect these weapons. We don't know exactly what they're going to do to the M700, to the MK17, to the MG5. I think I'll just make a new video like this, a uh, best weapons for the Division 1 patch title basin somewhere after the patch has landed and the data miners have updated the information in the spreadsheets. So I think that's that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the weapons. Oh no, one more thing. Uh, the specialization sniper, the initial bullet stability has been changed. Probably because players oftentimes shot the weapon and then it didn't register a hit, which was annoying. It was very annoying. So let's now move on to the weapon mods. And this is actually something that I don't really like because the weapon mods will now no longer have negative attributes anymore. And I can already see everybody in the room like, yes! Finally, because so, so many players hated the fact that these weapon mods came with negative attributes. But I, I actually liked it myself. It, um, it allowed players, like, uh, after you get the end game, right? After you get the end game and you get all your mods, you have everything crafted. You've got all these options for all these different weapons. And you can get, um, you know, the negative attributes allowed the positive attributes to be a lot stronger as well without breaking the builds. So if you were going for a damage to elite build, you could get damage to elite mods everywhere. And yes, you were going to take a, a hit in, uh, in headshot damage, or you were going to take a hit in critical hit chance or stability or accuracy or optimal range. I don't know all the mods off the top of my head, but you could really have a specialized build with that. And now what they're going to do is they're going to remove the negative attributes, but to compensate for that, they're also going to drastically lower the positive attributes. So now a critical hit chance scope isn't going to give you 20% critical hit chance. It's going to give you 5% critical hit chance. And uh, I don't really know. This kind of goes a step back for me because I liked deciding what I wanted to get on my build and then having to live with the trade-offs. I mean, the mod system as it came out, it was, it was a good system because I could build my character i could build my character in a specific way for example an smg build and i wouldn't have to build any critical hit chance on my gear pieces because for example i wanted to have talents on there that uh, didn't allow me to have more than five uh, offensive stat rolls which is for example something that strength has and strength is in my opinion one of the strongest talents in the game so if i wanted to have strength on my smg I couldn't have more than five offensive stat rolls, which means I couldn't have a lot of critical hit chance. But because the weapon mods uh, had such high rolls, I could just completely bypass that and get critical hit chance on my scope, critical hit chance on my uh, on my barrel, critical hit chance on my grip. Uh, and those weapon mods and their stat rolls, they wouldn't count. They wouldn't count towards those offensive stat rolls. Um, and that's now gone pretty much because the weapon mods are going to do a very little amount. It, it's more like, hey... Here's 10% headshot damage or 15% headshot damage. I don't know exactly how much we're going to get, but they're going to be kind of reduced. I guess we'll see what these values are on, uh, on launch day, and then we'll see how good the mods are. Moving on to the skills. The skill mods, they have been revamped. So for those that don't know, in the game right now, the skill mods, they're bugged. Not all of them, only the high-end ones. The high-end ones actually require the player to have more skill power than they should. I mean, players are still able to get the required amount of skill power, 
But is that really worth it for the mods? And this is not a question that I am asking. This is actually something that has been confirmed by a developer. The skill mods require too much skill power. This was not something that they did on feedback. It's simply they had the wrong number in the game and that made it really difficult to unlock these. So now I don't know exactly how much the skill mods are going to require you to have, how much skill power you're going to need. I don't really know. Uh, and it's also going to depend on how much the skill mods are going to give you. So it's a pretty dynamic thing where even if you get a bad skill mod, that might still be the thing that you want to use because it also requires less skill power. Uh, so, you know, you have a, a skill mod that gives you 20% more healing then that's going to require 4,000 skill power to unlock. But then you also have one that's 30% more healing, and that's suddenly, I don't know, like 5,000 skill power. It doesn't, I don't know exactly how it scales, and I don't even know if 30% more healing is even possible. This is just a wild example that I got off of the top of my head. Uh, just wanted to mention it, that uh, going into Tidal Basin, we'll have skill mods that work, which is pretty good, I guess, because now we can finally hopefully make some proper skill builds without giving up on everything else in the game. Oh, and something that I'm also very happy with, they finally fixed the cam launcher, which uh, you might say, well, the cam launcher wasn't broken. No, but the controls were extremely, extremely clunky on PC because you had to, let's say you had the cam launcher on E and then you wanted to shoot the cam launcher away. Well, you had to hold down E and then aim it and then release E to, to shoot it instead of just pressing E once and then using the mouse button to shoot it like we had it with the sticky bomb in the Division 1. So they said it's going to function closer to how the sticky bomb functioned in the Division 1, uh, but that's again something that I can only judge when Tidal Basin releases. And then last up, we also have a couple of other things that I should mention. Um, we have an event that will go live with apparel event caches which is uh, cosmetic stuff you know stuff like mobile games do like hey we have this whole event for a week and if you play the game you get special vanity caches and out of those special vanity caches you get special cosmetic items and uh, i guess you can also buy them this is something that i don't really want to go into because honestly i'm just not that concerned with how my character looks i am more concerned with uh, the game. <laughs> I, I just want to. I just want a game that plays well. So I don't really care how my character looks too much. And then we also have some um, some fixes. So the crafting workbench will be fixed. For those that don't know, some players cannot upgrade their workbench to world tier four. This is related to the same bug to where players were actually stuck in in a lower world tier when they would play the strongholds with their friends when they weren't at the right gear score yet. It's a problem that I've had as well, and my character right now still cannot upgrade his crafting bench to world tier 4, so <laughs> I haven't been able to craft any items yet uh, that have been world tier 4 on my main character. Of course, I've got other characters by now, but that's besides the point. So that's getting fixed. We're getting a uh, sensitivity slider for the scope, for scoped in views, which is really good because... Uh, this is one of the main parts that makes scoping in feel so clunky. The fact that you uh, can't adjust how fast it goes without also adjusting your main sensitivity. The only thing that I'm still worried about, and this is something that I've noticed with the Division 1 as well, and that's something that I've already talked about, is that uh, the different weapon archetypes have different sensitivity to them. And then if you equip the same scope on different type of weapons and look from the left to the right with different weapon types then the sensitivity will also be different. Uh, you could see this when, for example, equipping a 12x scope on an assault rifle and on a sniper in a Division 1 and looking from the left to the right. My mouse is going the same distance, but the sniper is still slower. And if there's just one sensitivity slider for uh, scoped in sensitivity, then it's going to be very good with snipers. But then if you scope in with an assault rifle, which I don't know why you would do that, but some players might want to do that, then it's going to feel really bad or too fast. So uh, that's something that I will look at, I guess, as well, when the update comes out. And then we're getting the FOV slider. Curious to see how far that can zoom out. And uh, we're getting quality of life changes to a bunch of things, like, for example, the Firefly. Although... They didn't really go in detail as to what we're getting, so again, we'll see when the update comes out. And that's pretty much my uh, recap for the state of the game of uh, the 3rd of April 2019. If you guys want me to, I also had the idea to just uh, talk about the whole patch after it has been launched, after it has been out for a couple days. Just give my general thoughts and opinions about 
uh, everything. Uh, I think that would be interesting to look at because now I I think I know a lot of stuff about all of these buffs and nerfs and changes, but you don't really know until you use it for yourself and see it for yourself, I guess. So I, I think that's something that I'm going to do. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video. As always, guys, I'll see you all later. Or like they say in the Netherlands, see you later.